What is up, everybody? It is my distinct pleasure to get back into the studio today to take a look at how all of my Waves plugins, all of my top Waves plugins that I use are working on my brand new Apple M1 Mac Mini. And again, I'm not making this video to convince everyone that they should go out and buy one of these machines. You should make the decision that's right for you. All I'm trying to say is all my stuff's been working pretty well. <laughs> that's all I'm trying to say. And I'm just trying to basically show you in a short and sweet video that um, all of my top waves plugins are working. I'm not going to have, um, you know, a whole heap of time to go through every single plugin that I have in the library that I currently own, but I'll go through all my top plugins that I use all the time from waves. And so, all right, here we go. We're looking at a song I'm working on uh, called Feast and the Famine by Foo Fighters. And it's a cover I'm working on currently just to um, increase my chops, not only performance-wise, but um, just mixing-wise and working in uh, Pro Tools-wise, production-wise, all that good stuff. So anyway, that is the song I'm working on currently. And... All of the plugins that I'm using right now, DBX 160, um, this is known to be kind of a, a little bit of a resource hog. But, you know, again, you know, we saw on the previous video that, you know, my system usage, my CPU is hovering pretty, it's it's pretty good. You know what I mean? It's not, it's barely peaking at like 30, 40% most of the time I'm playing this song. So, um, you know, just looking at some of the plugins. You know, so far so good. And in this latest version, right, you can increase the GUI size and do whatever you want to do there. Um, so there's all sorts of abilities to kind of customize it, of course, to make it uh, look like you want it to look. Um, I also use REQ all the time just because it's sort of until I get, um, you know, some of the more um, the high end uh, sort of frequency visualizers. This is my go to uh, frequency visualizer because it's really not um, that intense on the CPU and it, it just works. It was a piece of the So um, that is another one that I use all the time. Re I just put a two band on there, right? Because I'm, I'm really not even activating the bands most often. I'm just kind of using this to gauge. Um, and this is also a good tool, as you can see from this meter up here, as you hover over the frequency spectrum with your cursor, it actually gives you a visualizer of where your cursor is currently at. And I'm at 46 hertz right now, which is actually also corresponding to the F1 sharp note if that matters to you so that's a pretty cool thing to know if you're trying to do some really specific boosts um you know to the fundamental note or if you just want to find what the fundamental note is so that you can tune your you know bass notes or 808s or kind of whatever you want to do there to a specific frequency really geeky stuff all right so if i keep pushing forward here another one that i use all the time sheps 73 and I, I abuse it. You know what I mean? I really didn't ever start getting into doing this until recently because I, you know, I didn't understand kind of what the intention of this drive mechanism, it always blew up whatever I pushed into it, of course, in my ears, as soon as I hit this drive switch and started. And that's of course what happens also with a Neve preamp. When you really start driving the signal up into those regions, that's what it does. And so what you then do is <laughs> you attenuate the output right? That's what you do. And of course, that's going to give you that Neve sound. If And what, what I typically like to do then is set up, you know, a nice juicy sort of Neve sound, attenuate the output, but then make it, you know, basically so that it's level matched whenever I bypass it here. And, you know, you can A, B it and really judge the quality of what it's doing to the signal and, um, and you know, see if you really like it, see if that's what you want to do. Um, that is a plug-in alliance that we'll talk about those in another video. Um, and that is also an ozone elements thing I've got on that. So that we'll talk about that maybe in another video. Okay. So continuing on here, another thing I use all the time on the drum bus, and honestly, I'm going to experiment with this too. Um, but on the parallel drum bus, I use API 2500 religiously. Nothing to lose. And I just load up this drum kit, heavy compression setting, and I tend to be a little more aggressive with it. And I, I just mess with it 
you know what I mean, according to kind of what I'm needing for that particular track. But I tend to go pretty heavy on that channel because it's the parallel, it's the parallel compression. That's the whole point. And that's, you know, for a lot of the songs that I'm doing right now, which are more aggressive songs, you know what I mean? They just, it just sounds better to me. You know what I mean? So you guys tell me what you do. It, I'm interested to know what the different techniques are. Um, but this is uh, one that I like to use to really add a lot of beef, uh, a lot of girth to the drum sound. You know what I mean? You got the drum bus and you got the drum sounds, which is all the actual drums. And then you got the parallel drum sound, which is a heavily compressed, normally a little bit trashier, um, uh, vibier uh, version of the drum sound. Okay, continuing on a lot of what I use as well. You see REQ all over the place, right? But one thing I also use, especially on the DI bass uh, here recently, is R bass. I freaking love this thing because you can tune this to the fundamental note. Again, getting into your... You know, what am I playing? What note am I playing? Oh, I'm playing the, uh, you know, the, the, the D note or the A note or just, you know, whatever it is, whatever I'm playing, you know. Um, it looks like in this case I'm playing an E note, <clears throat> right? So the fundamental note is 80 hertz, and I can pull up REQ, and I can see that. And so then I know uh, when I go into R bass, I know which frequency than to set that R base to. And that's really what I want to sort of drive or that, that spectrum and some of those, you know, it adds some kind of harmonic content, I think. And, um, you know, in a way to frequencies around that as well, maybe not necessarily just that frequency band, but anyway, I always a B it and add this on the DI channel. And I love the, the thickness. This is just, this is how you make your bass sound, you know, thick with triple C thick. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do. Another thing you do is uh, decapitator or some other distortion on another channel. And we'll talk about sound toys in another video. All right. What else do I use all the time? I like to use F6 a lot because this is typically what I will do to uh, do a bit of shaping on the vocal, but I'll also use it to... Um, actually shot side chain, uh, generally speaking, I don't have that set up quite yet, but I'll typically side chain the lead vocal, um, on the, uh, on the music channel. So not on the vocal, but on the actual music channel, I'll load up an instance of F6 and I'll find, you know, that... To the new I'll find that frequency range that the vocal is operating in, say it's up here, right? And then I'll load up an instance of F6 over here, and then I'll kind of set it to just tuck the music just a touch. You know what I'm saying? Not enough to really be noticeable, but enough to really, it dramatically um, pushes the vocal out in front of the music. It's a it's a dirty, dirty birdie trick that you can use to to really push the vocals out in front of the music. And that's, that's what you do. You bust all the music together, Bust all the vocals together, and then you get an F6 loaded up on your music channel that basically operates by, you know, dynamically attenuating that particular range. And I, you kind of use it like a multi-band compressor in that way, and it's really cool. It's, it's, it's really cool. That's why it's called a dynamic EQ, F6, right? So that's another one that I use all the time. What else? I also use WLM+. Plus. Um just because I want to know the amount of luths. What's a luth? I don't know. All right. I don't remember. Go Google it. But it's basically a loudness unit um, that Spotify and YouTube and all of the um, platforms use to try to um, just level the dynamics playing field, so to speak, and make, you know, track to track, uh, you know, all of the all of the volumes sound fairly uniform. So this is how I can see where I'm at from a loudness perspective. Um, there's varying debates about where your music should be. If it should be um, at a level that is consistent with what the standards are at Spotify or YouTube, or if you should push your volume higher because people do that and that's how you add energy to stuff, you make it louder, which is true. Look, there's debate. I'm not going to debate that. And this, that's, not, that's another video. All right, so that's not in this video. And another one that I use all the time L2, all the time. I always use this just to tuck 
just a little bit, you know, just to do a little bit of limiting right at the very end and also to do this uh, out ceiling, um, you know, brick wall uh, of negative one, just to make sure that's already done at the output stage. So what else? Um, I use a lot of other Waves plugins as well. And if I just come into my Waves, because that's that's a cool thing as well. I've got my DAW set up so that I can actually just jump in and look at, um, you know, all of the Waves library stuff without having to go through the EQ menu or Dynamics menu or I remember all of the paths where all that stuff is. This groups all of my Waves stuff together. So stuff that I also use all the time, I mean, CLA 76, all the freaking time right 1176 emulation um before i uh you know started using the plugin alliance ssl channels i was always using the waves ssl channels so you know ssl uh channel strip or the g channel strip you know and the the updated versions of these actually look really cool i'm really um re i'm really kind of jazzed about how these look um, the graphics for these match, um, actually exceed a bit, uh, in my opinion, the CLA mix hub. And that's another, <clears throat> um, that's another one that I also used to use all the time as well. So CLA mix hub is, um, the SSL channel strip that is at CLA's studio. So that is, um, his studio. It's got kind of a cool feature in here where you can go into a bucket view and actually, uh, show the EQ or dynamics for multiple tracks at once. You have to really load this across, you know, uh, a number of tracks and, and sort of set all of that up in order to get into that view. But this is ultimately the channel strip, right? It's nice, uh, mic, you know, line, um, you know, line amplifier here you, you can use, um, the EQ section, um, the dynamics section, and then you can insert also anything you want. So whatever also that you have, in your library, you can start loading in other Waves plugins into this as well. Um, you are able to drag and drop and reorder things if you want to. So if you want to do Dynamics first or EQ first, you can make those decisions of how you want to how you want to do it. It's all up to you, um, and you can turn them on and off, right? So it's really really cool. Um, I use that all the time as well. Um, and especially now that I have a computer that uh, that really does the does the job well, um, the H library, I um, use a lot of those all the time. Also, what else? I know I had a pull tech here on the bass. So Pug tech, I use this guy all the time for bass um, to do just that, just to really drive the bass, boost it, attenuate it, and do that sort of trick it's i don't know what it it's it's crazy the amount of um low end energy that this thing adds it's really really cool um mod delay that's a standard pro tools thing what else do i use all the time i mean i own the gold library right now there's some stuff that i don't quite use all the time um this is kind of cool. There's some stuff that I actually probably want to learn more about and get into using. And so I might make some videos on uh, some of these things like sibilance and some of these other things that I really haven't owned until just recently um, since I upgraded to gold. Uh, you know, I really haven't tried a lot of this stuff. Um, so some of these things are a bit foreign to me, but um, some of the ones that are staples for me that I would use all the time, anything in their distortion, um, you know, they came out with that, um, it's like a, a multi, it's like a multi-mod rack, I think it's what it's called. Uh, yeah, multi-mod rack. So this distortion thing, really love this. Now this tended to use a lot of CPU as well, but again, um, you know, not a problem for me, I think, right now. And as, what you can do is you can add three different distortion units and then, you know, do some EQ and figure out what your crossover points, what, where you want those to be in terms of, um, you know, where each distortion unit's operating, what frequencies it's operating on. So it's super, super cool. Um, and the distortion units that you can load into here, um, of course, uh, you know, Screamer, you can overdrive, you can put compressors and different stuff in here if you want. So there's just all sorts of stuff you can do. 
It's really, really cool stuff, and it's all working really well. I have to say, uh, no complaint whatsoever. And um, yeah, just wanted to make a quick video showing my experience. Um, you know, there's not too much real audio to listen to. Um, you know, but just wanted to talk a bit about how everything is working for me in the Waves library. Until next time.